Welcome back to the channel guys. So today we're talking about bases, but not just bases for the miniatures, but actually for your scenery. So over some of the previous weeks, you've seen me experimenting with a few different building processes using polystyrene, um, Acus 6mm, and all sorts of different things. Now, I found that I can quite happily just put them straight onto the table. But then depending on the type of surface, some of the sort of static, uh, static grass, some of the grass um, tablecloths that I use are a bit spongy, and so the small houses just fall over. So I've been building these bases, so that way it'll spread the load and stop them from toppling. All we're doing here is getting some foam core, cutting it to the required sizes. In hindsight, if I were going to do it again, I'd probably actually cut them all into squares rather than rectangles, um, just because that way there would be more of a inter... I don't know what the word is, but sort of you could lock them in together in a an easier pattern rather than the rectangles where you can really only fit uh, short edge to short and long to long, but it doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, I painted the bases up in just sort of a, a mottled green and brown because they are going to get flocked afterwards and so that was just a base coat. For the little hovels, um, check out one of the other videos that I've done on how I actually painted those up. I decided I'd try and just build a little uh, farmer's field here, so all I did was put some hot glue streaks down painted it brown. What I could have done I guess afterwards is if I'd got some soil or an earth uh, coloured flock I could have flocked it uh, but for these ones I literally just painted it the brown and was happy with that. The next step is to try and give them a little bit more uh, interest rather than just flat pieces so I just used that little screw to make a couple of holes uh, you could use anything, you could use a knife, a screwdriver, any specialist tool you have, uh, but I had a screw right there so I used that. Then I dipped my little trees into some PVA and stuck them straight in and that should do the job, although you could probably use super glue, but that might melt the foam, I'm not entirely sure, so be warned that could happen. Uh, these little trees, they were all that sort of bright green colour originally. But what I did is I dipped them in some water and then just um, dabbed them with some oranges and some yellows to give a few different colorations. And yeah, it actually came out quite nicely. I saved having to buy a whole new bag of different color trees. So as you saw there, I chopped down some of the uh, trunks just to give a few different levels. So one's a slightly taller tree, the bottom one could be a shrub, could be anything. I don't know about anyone else, but I do find it quite relaxing actually, building scenery. Uh, I mean, I like painting the miniatures, but scenery is just something where you can just kind of, I don't know, immerse yourself in it, because you are creating, creating a little world. <clears throat> there you can see, that's exactly what I meant, if I'd made them all squares, they would have locked in um, in a better manner, rather than the rectangles, but ultimately it doesn't matter at all. It's my table at the end of the day, so who cares. So the next thing that I started to do is I figured, well, we've got a farmer's field, maybe we'd want to have a hedge surrounding the field. So I don't know why or what was going through my head, but I had a popsicle stick, so I just started applying PVA glue with the popsicle stick. Um, could have used a paintbrush. As I said, I don't know what I was thinking, but it seemed to do the job quite nicely. And then just with some little bits of plump foliage that I'd already torn up, um, I had a couple of different colours, I just stuck that down all around to create my, my hedge. A little bit fiddly and in a couple of places the glue uh, got onto my fingers and then would stick onto the foam, uh, sorry the, uh, the clump foliage like that and it was a bit of a pain but overall not too much of an issue and it gave me another bit of interest within the miniatures themselves rather than just being flat or just trees. So I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. Again, note to self next time, 
do everything from the ground up and put the tree in last so you don't have to fiddle around underneath it. And then I just put in a couple of little bits of uh, clump foliage just around as little bushes in different places on the miniatures. So next up we've got again the little trees which I uh, painted in different colours. So you got the red one there, yellow, green, that one I kind of dabbed with some red just so I don't know, it looks like apples or something, doesn't really matter. And I also did the same thing with these larger trees. So red, and I think I did a yellow one as well. I used just some cheap craft paint on those, and at the time it was very damp and wet in New Zealand, and it took ages to dry. So bear that in mind. You want to be in a nice dry area when you're going to soak your trees, but then they do end up nicely. So there's the old uh, polystyrene houses from a few weeks ago. Stuck it down just with hot glue. Just be warned with the hot glue, put a bead down first and leave it a few seconds to dry before you push the foam onto it, otherwise it'll melt the, uh, the base or whatever part of the foam it touches. So again, we're going to put a hedge around this, um, this square and a tree. And I've got a few of these uh, clumps, grass clumps left or tufts, so we're going to be mixing and matching a few different things throughout. So that tree like that I actually got as freebies when I purchased the American Civil War uh, Warlord Games Epic Battles box. And they are quite nice. Um, and the roots do give you a good area to get the uh, hot glue on. In the background, if you can hear the rain, my apologies. Again, the weather has been absolutely ridiculously bad recently in New Zealand. We really haven't had a summer, it's just been rain and storms and more rain, it's just awful. Anyway, yep, flocking like normal, so I used two different um, materials. I used sand for basically the paths, and then just the regular green flocking for the, the grass, as you would imagine. With my flocking, I did add a little bit of ground down sawdust as well, just to give it a little bit of a a broken texture rather than all continuous. There's the old popsicle stick again. It actually does, I think I remember why I used it because it was quite easy to get a good bead down without um, spreading it all over with the paintbrush. And again, maybe it would have been better to have flopped before putting the trees in. As I was saying earlier, starting from the ground up, um, because trying to put flock underneath the trees was a bit of a hassle. So, points to remember for next time. Now we've got a few bases ready for just uh, random houses to be stuck on, or you could use them as parts. There's the little village for the 6mm. And then the next thing I've been working on is Classinois for when I do the Battle of Waterloo. So I managed to get a few different maps and photos of other battlefields that people had created to try and give myself an idea. Um, although there were quite a few conflicting ideas. This is kind of the image that I ended up working towards. Unfortunately most of my footage got lost, but I do have some stills. So again, it's foam core base, polystyrene houses, and then I had a bit of uh, putty which I built up the, the sort of grassy areas. Put a few hedges and trees in, 
and then once it was finished, I think it actually worked out quite nicely. Uh, when you refer it back to the original image, uh, which I was using as my base, it does look reasonably realistic and can be used um, interchangeably as just a regular village anywhere across continental Europe. So overall I think it worked out very nicely. Um, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but good for a tabletop and seeing as it only took, well, a few hours to build, it's easy for you to do something similar for yours. Anyway, thanks for watching. It was a little bit longer this time than usual, so sorry about that, but I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.